This is episode 153 of the e-commerce Coffee Break podcast. This time I have Paul Benigieri on the show. He's co-founder and CEO of archive.com and we talk about how to save Instagram stories, reels and posts. So let's get into it. But before we get started, a big thank you to our sponsors for supporting today's episode. Accessicard helps e-commerce merchants with accessibility compliance for people with disabilities, which not only helps you avoid getting sued or fined, but also helps you optimize user experience for all your customers. Find them at accessicart.com. That's A-C-C-E-S-S-I-C-R-T.com. And use the coupon code COFFEEBREAK to get $250 off an accessibility audit of any size. Attention all business owners. Tired of struggling with ineffective data integration? VL Omni offers a unique solution for your business to achieve long-term growth. With tailored integrations to match your corporate strategy, you can expect improved results. VL Omni's managed service approach gives you fast implementation and scalability across all channels. Choose VL Omni for a different and more effective data integration solution. Visit VL Omni today. That's V-L-O-M-N-I dot com. This is the e-commerce coffee break. A top-rated Shopify growth podcast dedicated to Shopify merchants and business owners looking to grow their online stores. Learn how to survive in the fast-changing e-commerce world with your host, Klaus Lauter, and get marketing advice you can't find on Google. Welcome, welcome, welcome to, to the, the show. show. Hello, welcome to another episode of the e-commerce Coffee Break. User-generated content, big topic for all merchants out there. Easy and very trustful way to generate content and to build up your brand and trust with your brand. Everyone is on Instagram, on TikTok, and all the other social channels, but sometimes it's very difficult to find out where actually user-generated content is posted about your brand. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So on the show, I have Paul Benigieri with me. He is the co-founder and CEO of Archive, a company that develops software to automate e-commerce digital marketing workflows. He's also a founder and operator who has done everything from building custom e-commerce platforms to deploying billions in ad spend. Prior to Archive, Paul was VP of Growth and Engineering at HVMN, running the direct-to-customer brands digital marketing, e-commerce, and engineering teams. He also received a BS in computer science from Stanford in three years. So let's welcome Paul to the show. Hi, Paul. How are you today? I'm doing great. Excited to chat. Glad to have you. Paul, tell me a little bit, why is user-generated content so important nowadays? There's two main reasons. First of all, people have gotten sick and used to a lot of traditional marketing formats, whether that's banner ads or whether that's a video ad that's produced. And so seeing other people use a product that you might be interested in purchases down the line is a really great way for customers to discover new content. They'll see it in a real case. It's very believable. There's social proof. It's just a more fun and native to the current platform's way of consuming content. The other reason why it's super important is because the social algorithms have completely changed. Back in the day, if you had a million followers on Instagram, you could post a video and literally almost a million people would see it. Now you can have a million followers on Instagram. If you post a crappy reel or a crappy TikTok video, no one's going to see it. And so if you rely on your community to generate awesome content for you, every single one of those pieces of content has a chance to rank, to go viral. And typically brands that are generating these UGC content machines, they're able to go viral on TikTok and get way more attention through these new platforms than if you're just creating your basic photo or video of your products and posting that on Instagram or TikTok. Okay. Before we go into how you can harness this kind of content that is out there, what's the best strategy for a small, medium enterprise working on Shopify to get content out there that is shareable, where people basically generate content from? Is there any kind of triggers? How would you do that? We can talk about a couple of examples. So let's imagine you have a number of customers that are purchasing from you already. You could very easily set up a flow in Klaviyo and PostScript and Intentive after people receive their product and be like, hey, look, you know, we're here to grow. Hope you like the product. Here's some sort of an incentive if you'd be willing to share content or post on TikTok or Instagram. And those incentives could be a call with the founder. They could be credit. They could be payment, all sorts of things. So that's just like a really quick, easy way. You've got customers coming in, just set up an automation, just how you do card abandonment or replenishment series to encourage people to post. That's if you already have customers. If you don't have customers, then you've got a cold start problem. What you can do instead is make a list of your top 10 competitors or 10 hashtags on Instagram and TikTok that's relevant to your brand. Find some of those influencers whose content you feel like is good quality and they're getting maybe some nice comments, nice engagement, 
and literally get in touch with them. Oftentimes you can DM them. Oftentimes they'll have an email or a contact form, reach out to them, let them know you want them to try your product either for free or potentially you can offer to pay them to try the product and create content and have those conversations with those small influencers. You start off with 10 and maybe you'll get five good ones. If you like them, you can put them on payroll, right? Where they get some sort of compensation every month to create new content for you. Maybe that compensation, again, it could be store credit, it could be new products, it could be cash, and then you can build up the flywheel, right? You get five in January, five in February, five in March, and then you've got 15 creators that are pumping out three pieces of awesome content every month, potentially, right? So you can stack that nicely. Okay, makes perfect sense. Now, the biggest problem you scratch your head at archive.com about on how to solve that is that a lot of this content disappears very, very quickly. Stories, 24 hours, gone. Reels sort of disappear and you have this huge boost of posts. So it becomes very time consuming and labor intensive for a small medium enterprise for a Shopify solopreneur or side hustler to find all this content. You found a solution for that. Tell me a little bit about it. When we used to run our community marketing programs at companies before Archive, we'd sometimes work with thousands of influencers and generate sometimes hundreds of posts in a single day. If you're taking a screenshot and putting that in Google Sheets, that's a lot of work. A lot of stuff disappears and not a lot of fun. And so we built technology to automate all of that. So with Archive, our technology can help brands automatically detect anytime a customer, an influencer, your mom that's supporting your brand, anyone mentions or tags your brand on Instagram or TikTok, stories, reels, feed posts, TikTok videos, all that good stuff. We'll detect all that for you, save all of that for you so you can manage it in one really nice, easy to use dashboard. So even by doing that, we can save you tons of time and even though you might not be paying attention to your socials every day. Now, once you have archive, when you are launching that Black Friday campaign or that Mother's Day or Valentine's Day campaign, which is coming up, you'll be able to have a ton of content ready to go that you can think about using for those campaigns, right? So you want to turn it on, let it go on autopilot, have it save a bunch of content for you. And then from there, when you actually do need UGC, whether you're redoing the campaign, you're launching a new page on your website, you'll have that ready to go. Okay. I understand when you're working with influencers or content creators, there might be some user right issues there because they are the original creator. Normally the copyright lies with the creator. Are there ways to deal with that? How do you do that? Yeah, great question. Typically there's two things that happens. If you're working directly with an influencer and have a contract, usually that's good to go. But one of the sticky things is what happens if this awesome customer tags your brand and you've got a really cool reel or story that you want to use and you don't have that contract. Well, normally you have to go find their email. You have to do all sorts of things to track it, ask them if they can use it. And it's a huge mess to find their contact, shoot them an email, follow up, well, and then keep track that you actually have permissions for that content. In Archive, in two clicks, you can request usage rights. And so you go on Archive, you find a post you like, click, click, boom, send. Influencer gets a DM. They can approve or reject in one click. And all of that data is saved within Archive. You can see all the content that's approved all the content that's not approved. And again, we make your life super easy. And fun fact, some people are like, oh, big influencers are like too cool to receive automated messages. Well, Kim Kardashian actually got an automated usage rights request from Archive and approved it. So Kim Kardashian is the limit. It works for Kim, it'll probably work for most people, right? I agree. Now, with all the content you have and you want to repurse it, obviously it comes in different formats. So it can be a reel, it can be a story, it can be a video, it can be just a post. What's the best way for a merchant to really make the most of this content that they have now on hand. There's a bunch of ways you can use user-generated content. Some of the really basic ones is you can use it for your ads, right? So when you think of doing a story format Facebook ad or a TikTok ad, a lot of this UGC will work super, super well. You know how it is. And if you're a little bit fancy on the ad side, you can actually launch a bunch of your UGC in a dynamic creative ad on Facebook and let Facebook kind of optimize and pick the winners for you. You can use it in your email campaigns or SMS campaigns. If you've got an offer or like a new campaign, sometimes it can be a lot more interesting to, instead of sending another photo with a white background that everybody gets, right, your standard product shot, you could send some UGC or story of a customer using that. So you could create a GIF of three to five photos and drop that into your email and make that a little bit dynamic. So we talked about Facebook ads and TikTok ads, we talked about email. We actually have functionality that can help you embed this UGC on your website. So you can imagine on your homepage, pulling up your five favorite TikToks of your customers using and talking about your product. You can actually embed those TikToks on your homepage. That can help with discovery, that can help with branding, that can help with social proof. 
We can also put it on your product pages or on your collection pages. And people kind of like scroll through that TikTok content, see which products tagged in, click and buy, right? So you can actually like bring in all that rich user-generated content that performs really, really well in terms of telling your brand story, in terms of explaining the product, in terms of social proof, and in a couple of clicks embed that on your website. We've seen all sorts of things. People have even launched billboards with UGC. There's some famous Twitter campaigns where they show people's tweets and stuff. It's just like awesome ammo for marketing that you can use that's like super, super easy to create and generate that can perform really, really well in many different formats and use cases. So, so many ways to leverage UGC. And now a quick break to thank the sponsors of today's episode. Estimates are that 20% of all adults have a disability, and accessibility is a growing concern for all merchants. Last year in the United States, 77% of all lawsuits around website ADA compliance involved e-commerce sites. If a blind person can't enter a payment method, you've lost a sale. You want to fix that. Automated scripts you add to your theme can only find and fix about 30% of your issues. But our friends at Accessicard can help. They work alongside your in-house teams to help you identify issues so your site can work better for more people, including people with disabilities. Improving accessibility can help expand your audience, improve your SEO, and make your site better for everyone. Accessicard is offering our listeners $250 off an audit of any size, including their mini audit on the checkout process, a common place to find issues. Head to accessicard.com and use coupon code COFFEEBREAK. Attention all retailers. Do you want to provide your customers with a seamless shopping experience? No matter where they shop, they expect and deserve an easy, hassle-free experience. But what do you do? Don't you deserve a solution that integrates your systems, channels and partners without wasting time on manual processes? Real Omni is the answer. They are an integration platform partner for real-time, agile and scalable iPaaS data integration. Their platform integrates your systems, channels and partners, giving you visibility, flexibility and time to grow and expand your business. Top global merchants choose Real Omni to move data seamlessly and integrate their businesses, delivering a fully integrated customer experience that exceeds expectations. With 30 years of data integration expertise, let them fit the Real Omni solution to match your business strategy. Visit Real Omni today and let their expertise guide you. That's VLOMNI.com. I'm a bit curious about the technical aspect of it because stories vanish after 24 hours so you can't access them how do you do it where is this content stored or how does it work with the brand permission we'll capture that into archive and then as you collect usage rights we can now save that forever for you right so may we make that super super easy for brands and get rid of that problem in its entirety okay you worked with a lot of brands obviously you also see the downside so somebody who's doing it completely wrong what are the biggest pitfalls or errors that people make when it comes to user-generated content we have almost a thousand paying customers mostly brands on shopify it's really hard to screw up the main thing i would say that people can mess up with user-generated content is trying to control it too much right so if you're talking to your five influencers one of them's a mom one of them's a dad one of them's a teenager they're all going to have different voices whether it's me or you, we're like, hey, here's the script, here's what you got to do. You're going to potentially lose a lot of authenticity versus maybe giving them a couple of talking points, maybe giving them a couple of guidelines, but really letting the creators be themselves, be creative. So I think that's like a big aspect of it. Other than that, it's really hard to screw up because you're just generating content. And if you have a bad piece of content, it doesn't really matter because for every crappy piece of content, you have a bunch of other great content. So because the volume is so high, you don't need every single piece of content to be amazing. You just need a couple winners. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Now, if you're a starter, your shop is brand new, you have a very small followership, it might be a little bit difficult to have people out there creating content. For what stage in your business does it really make sense to reach out and grow your user generated? From day zero, if I was starting a brand from scratch, I would actually include user generated content as much as possible in my prototyping stage. I would send samples to influencers, be like, hey, I'm developing this really cool skincare brand that's focused on this demographic. Here's why it's going to be awesome. Would love to include you on your journey. Can I send you some samples? Right. And so as you're actually telling the brand story, you can actually include these awesome people on TikTok that are actually trying your samples, giving you feedback. So that's an example where you might not even have a shop by storefront, but if you have an idea, and you're starting working on the product, you can actually leverage creators and user-generated content to tell your story better. That actually works really well on TikTok right now. People are following these behind-the-scenes stories of brands being built. People are really excited about that kind of stuff, and so that could be a great strategy. Again, as long as you have product and maybe a little bit of investment potentially, 10 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, depending on you know how big of an influencer you want to work with, those are the numbers you're really talking about to start off. And so 
I don't think anyone is too early to think about working with usage and content. That's definitely a great tip. From your experience, what's happening right now on social media, TikTok growing and shrinking down or the other way around? Give me a bit of a prediction there. I think that TikTok is going to continue to grow. I think the, the big risk with TikTok is that, you know, a lot of people in the US are talking about it getting banned or not. I, you know, suppose and hope that on the by dance side of things that owns TikTok, they're just being quite calculative with respect to the risk and they will find a landing spot, whether that's working very closely with regulators in the US to make sure that all the policies are compliant and whatnot, or selling TikTok to a US entity. I think that product and the amount of traction is too big to fail. People really love it. And so something is going to stick. That is my personal prediction. I also think that Instagram reels are getting better and better. YouTube shorts are another format that's growing really, really quickly. There's a ton of opportunity specifically around this short form content, right? If I was a brand, if I was going to focus on a couple of different things, I would go all in on short form content and I would work with creators or I would have a strategy that helps me create short form content and then hedge across those three channels, Reels, TikTok Shorts, Reels, YouTube Shorts, and TikTok, right? It's similar format that you can get leverage across all channels. We see a lot of times brands are reposting or repurposing their Reels on TikTok, their Reels on Shorts and vice versa. And that strategy works really well. well that's a great tip. Now, if somebody wants to get in touch with you guys, what's the best way to get started? Head over to archive.com. We have an awesome free trial. So you can try everything on the platform at zero risk, start capturing your content. And if you want to get in touch with me personally, you can find me on Twitter. It's my last name at Benny Jerry, B-E-N-I. G-E-R-I. Okay, we'll put that in the show notes. Give me a bit of an idea on the pricing structure of archive.com. Starts off at 30 bucks a month. We've designed it to be super affordable. Larger brands with a ton of content are going to be paying more than that, but it starts off at 30 bucks a month. So it's super affordable, super easy to use. And it's based on what we call community members. So the more profiles we're detecting for you, the more potentially you're going to pay. You can set caps and limits, but if you've got a million people tagging you on Instagram, it's going to be a little bit more expensive than if you're just starting out and are in the 50 to 100 range, right? Similar to Clavio, right? The more contacts you have, the more you're going to pay, but you really kind of have this value-based pricing that is designed to make sense for small people that are just launching their store, just starting out, as well as some of the biggest consumer brands, the fastest growing brands that are using Archive today, like Magic Spoon, for example, Feastables, and some other really cool brands like Parade and more. Okay. I played around with archive.com. I had a look today and I think it's a power tool for every marketer to just save a lot of time and get a bit of a control of what's out there. So I really, really like it. Paul, thanks so much for your time. I will put the links I said in the show notes. Then you're just one click away and have a great day. Awesome. It was so great to chat. Take it easy. Before you leave, don't forget to visit the sponsor of today's episode. Accessicard helps e-commerce merchants with accessibility compliance for people with disabilities, which not only helps you avoid getting sued or fined, but also helps you optimize user experience for all your customers. Find them at accessicart.com. That's A-C-C-E-S-S-I-C-R-T.com. And use the coupon code COFFEEBREAK to get $250 off an accessibility audit of any size. Attention all business owners. Tired of struggling with ineffective data integration? Real Omni offers a unique solution for your business to achieve long-term growth. With tailored integrations to match your corporate strategy, you can expect improved results. VL Omni's managed service approach gives you fast implementation and scalability across all channels. Choose VL Omni for a different and more effective data integration solution. Visit VL Omni today. That's V-L-O-M-N-I dot com. And that's a wrap for this episode. I hope you found today's episode informative and actionable. As a reminder, we have a growing community of e-commerce professionals where you can share your insights, ask questions, and learn from other merchants. If you're interested in joining, please visit our website at ecommercecoffeebreak.com and sign up for the community. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review our podcast to stay updated on the latest marketing trends and strategies for Shopify e-commerce merchants. See you next time.